Hi guys, it's Pat and Seb from Fronius Australia and today we are here to answer one of the most common questions. What's the difference between an AC and DC coupled solution? Before we go and talk about the solution, let's see how a solar system works. So here you can see the components of a solar system. So you've got your panels up here, you've got your inverter here, you've got your loads here, the grid over there, the utility meter, and then the Fronius smart meter. Okay, so what happens is sunlight is converted by the panels into DC power. The inverter will invert or convert that DC power into AC power, which is what comes out of the plug points in your house or in your business, etc. right? So that AC power can go to your loads. It can also be sent to the grid, right? So you can see there, it's coming in as DC being converted to AC to go to your loads. It can also be going to the grid and it can also be accepting uh, AC power from the grid as well. Now the Fronius smart meter's job is to measure the power going to the grid or coming from the grid. And that'll give you an indication of your site consumption. So this is basically how a, system, uh, a solar system works, right? A lot of installers ask us, what's then the difference between a DC and AC couple solution? All right, so we'll look into the differences there between a DC couple solution and an AC couple solution. So starting off with a DC couple solution, you've got your DC couple battery now attached to the inverter. It's attached directly to the inverter. I was saying before how the panels convert sunlight into DC power. A DC couple battery means it can accept DC power. So there's no conversion required. It comes through as DC power, goes into the battery to charge the battery, right? Now, when you want to send power to your loads, the inverter will convert the DC power into AC power. So that could be coming from the panels. It could also be coming from the battery. So here, the power has been converted from DC power by the inverter again to AC power to go to the loads. Now, looking at an AC coupled uh, solution, you can see that you've got a battery here, but it is not attached to the inverter. It is attached to the AC side of the system. Right? And you can see this symbol here, which is an inverter symbol. That's because the AC couple battery has its own little inverter in there. Now this inverter is different to our solar inverter because this inverter can't have panels attached to it like here. Its sole purpose is just to convert either AC to DC or DC to AC. So let's see how that works. I was saying before how the power comes in as DC power, it's converted by the inverter into AC power. Now that can be going to your loads or to the grid, but it can also be going into the battery to charge it because an AC couple battery means that it can only accept AC power to charge it. So you can see there it's coming in as AC power. Now to store that power or to store that energy, it has to convert it back into DC. So that's what that's, this inverter is doing right now. It's converting the incoming AC power into DC power and then it's stored as DC energy here, right? Now, when you wanna use that energy, you have to convert it again. So again, this inverter will flip it again from DC back to AC and then it can be sent to your loads. So that is the differences there. So we get this question quite a lot also from installers. Why would someone go for an AC couple solution? Why would someone go with a DC couple solution? Okay, so let's look at some of the benefits of a DC couple solution, and there are a few. Okay, so here you've got your DC couple solution on the left, and you've got your AC couple solution on the right. You can see here, as I said, the DC couple battery can accept DC power to charge it, right? And then when it wants to send that uh, energy to the loads, it sends it out as AC power, so it has one conversion. Here on the other hand, it has to come from the panels as uh, DC power. It is converted by the inverter into AC power. It comes into the battery's inverter. It gets converted again to store it as DC energy. And then when it's being sent out again, it has to be converted again back into AC to be used by the loads. So you can see there, one conversion, two conversion, three conversions. Over here, only one conversion is needed, right? So you can see here, it's a more efficient uh, type of system. The other one that, uh, the other benefit there is that you're able to do true three-phase backup. 
depending on the battery and the inverter. But here you've got a DC coupled battery attached to our Simo Gen 24 in the six to 10 kilowatt range. And you're able to do true three phase backups of three phase loads. Okay, so that's another benefit. Lastly, another benefit of having a DC coupled battery is that you're able to have more PV capacity on a single phase site. So here in Australia, with most single phase sites, you're allowed a maximum of 10 kilowatts of inverters on the site. So when you've got a DC coupled battery, you can have all that 10 kilowatts worth of solar inverter on the site. Now say your inverters were able to be oversized by 150%, that means that you could have 15 kilowatts worth of DC attached to 10 kilowatts worth of inverters. Now, if you had an AC coupled battery on site, the AC coupled battery has a small inverter inside it, right? Like I said before. Now that inverter counts towards this total inverter capacity. So let's take an example where you have a five kilowatt AC coupled battery that's got a five kilowatt inverter inside it. That means you're only allowed to now have five kilowatts worth of solar inverters on site. If you take that same oversizing ratio of 150% as an example, that means that in this case, you could only have 7.5 kilowatts worth of panels attached to those inverters. So it's a lot smaller. And so now you, you explain some benefit of, let's say the DC side of things, DC couple side of things. What would be the benefit of having an AC couple solution? Okay, so one of the main reasons why someone might opt for an AC couple solution is because as I was saying, it's not attached to the inverter itself. The battery is attached to the AC side of the system, which means that you can retrofit it onto pretty much any system, right? So whether it's a new system or maybe an older system, all you have to do is link it in onto the AC side of the system, okay? Whereas with a DC coupled battery, it has to be a hybrid inverter that can accept DC coupled batteries. And then on top of that, you have to make sure that there's compatibility between the inverter and the battery as well. So the AC coupled battery can work in a lot of different situations. Then also, some customers might like a particular feature or maybe the monitoring platform or something about a particular AC coupled battery. And that might be another reason to go for an AC coupled battery. Thanks, Pat, for this explanation. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys uh, had similar questions, right? And here it can help you also explain to your customers what's the difference between AC and DC couple solution. If you want to learn more about the Fronia solution, you can head to our website, to our Facebook page, and also to our YouTube channel where there's a lot of content. And I hope you enjoyed this session with both of us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.